There is something terrifying going on at Chuck E. Cheese right now, and I'm gonna explain it to you. So we all know about the game Five Nights at Freddy's, right? It's a game based around a restaurant that's pretty much like a Chuck E. Cheese where the animatronics come to life and wreak havoc on all the guests there. But what if I told you this was possibly happening in real life right now? Just two days ago, five children have gone missing inside of a Chuck E. Cheese and the parents reported a weird smell from the inside of the building. And then just like Five Nights at Freddy's, someone that worked the late night shift actually got killed after hours. Now these are all pretty weird, but here's the kicker right here. Check out this headline. Night shift workers from Chuck E. Cheese claim strange movement from animatronics post hours. So I don't know, what do you think about this? Do you think it's real? Do you think it's fake? And I mean with 2020 and everything going on, like I wouldn't be shocked if it was real. This is why you should always change your locks. In 2017, a college girl woke up from a nightmare drenched in sweat and decided to rinse off before going back to sleep. She propped her phone on a shelf, turned on some music, and then hopped in the shower. A few minutes later, she reaches for her phone to change the song, but stops suddenly. Reflected on her phone's screen was a person standing in the middle of her bathroom facing the shower. She somehow kept her composure, turned the water to scalding hot, and then ripped open the curtain and sprayed the intruder in the face. As they howled in pain, she ran past them to her kitchen to get her butcher's knife. In a panic, she can't find her knife, so she just runs out of the apartment and calls the police. The police go in and come out with a crazy looking woman in handcuffs. One of the officers comes over to the girl and says she used to live here and she had copies of your keys. Then he pauses and looks down and brings up a clear evidence bag that contained her butcher's knife and he says, looks like she wanted her apartment back. This is why you should never stay in sketchy motels. In 2005, a young woman on a solo road trip across the country decided to stop for the night. The first place she sees is the Mountaintop Motel. It looked pretty cheap, but she was tired, so she said, good enough. The check-in guy eyed her up and down very uncomfortably and then asked her if she was traveling alone. She ignores the question, pays for her room, and then walks away with the key. When she gets inside her room and sees there are literally cockroaches in her bed, she says nope and decides to sleep in her car in the parking lot. Around 3 a.m., she wakes up to see the check-in guy using his own keys to get into the motel room she was supposed to be in. A few minutes later, he storms out and slams the door and starts walking towards her car. Terrified, she hides under her blanket as the man tries to open her car doors but can't and walks away. She speeds off and calls her friend and asks her to look up the address of Mountaintop Motel so she can give it to police. Her friend's quiet for a second and then just says, the Mountaintop Motel closed a week ago. If someone offers you this, walk away. In 2016, a man was staying at his friend's cabin in the woods when he decided to go for an evening stroll. A little ways down the trail, he hears someone call out from behind his neighbor's house. He looks up and he sees this skinny guy pop out from behind the building who starts waving frantically at him to come over. Worried this guy could be in trouble, the man takes off running to assist. But when he gets close enough, the neighbor just offers him a fistful of Slim Jims and starts talking about how much he hates his wife. Sensing there was something wrong with this guy, he says no thank you to the Slim Jims and walks away. The next day, the man calls his friend who owned the cabin to ask him what the deal was with his weirdo neighbor. There was silence on the phone, and then his friend just says, I don't have any neighbors. The police are called, and it turns out his neighbor was really some lunatic who had recently killed his wife and had been hiding out in the abandoned cabin next door. This is why you always say yes to tandoori chicken. In 2012, a high school tutor and her student stayed up so late one night studying that by the time they were done, the buses had stopped running. Without another way home, the student asked if he could stay the night at her place. Reluctantly, she agreed. When they got back to the apartment, she fell asleep on her bed and he fell asleep on a blanket next to her bed on the ground. A few hours later, she wakes up to the boy standing awkwardly in the middle of the room with a very strange look on his face. She asks him, what's wrong? He looks at her and says, I'm really hungry. Let's go get some tandoori chicken. Confused, she says, it's 2 a.m. Just get a snack in the cupboard. And he grabs her by the arm and he says, no, we are getting tandoori chicken right now. And he yanks her from the bed. Feeling totally caught off guard by this whole situation, she goes into the hall with the boy, and as soon as the door shuts behind them, she can tell that he is terrified. He looks at her and just says, I'm not actually hungry. When I woke up, there was someone under your bed. This is why you should always trust your gut. In the early 1970s, a college student decided to hitchhike his way home after class. A car pulls up, a man offers him a ride, and he climbs in. As soon as the car started moving, the student felt totally uneasy, like something was wrong, but he couldn't quite place it. Without saying anything, he waited till the next time they slowed down and he flung the door open and ran away. 
Two years later, he's flicking through TV channels when he comes across this special interview with a death row inmate. And it's just the audio recording, so he hears the interviewer ask the inmate, why did you remove all the door handles inside of your car? The man just goes, well, the first time I tried to kill someone, I picked up a college hitchhiker who got smart at some point and jumped out of my car. So, lesson learned, remove all the door handles. When they showed his picture, the student knew immediately that he was supposed to be the first victim of John Wayne Gacy, a.k.a. the killer clown who had killed over 30 men and boys in his clown room and stuffed them into his basement. This is why you should always trust your gut. In the 1970s, a young couple decided to go for a late night hike in the woods. A couple minutes into their walk and the man remembers thinking something's not right. He tells his girlfriend, but they just decide to ignore it and keep going, until he steps on something that felt really soft, like it was alive. Before he has a chance to see what he stepped on, they hear all this rustling in the bushes next to them, and they bolt. Years later, that couple turns on the TV, and a death row inmate who's about to be executed is being interviewed. And they ask him, was there ever a time that you were almost caught red-handed? He responded, yes, one time. I was in the woods and a couple walked through and the man actually stepped on the body of a girl I had just killed. I was hiding in the bushes just a few feet away. They didn't see me. That couple had run into one of the worst serial killers of all time, Ted Bundy. Blood curdling facts that you wish you never knew, part one. When creating the Pirates of the Caribbean ride at Disneyland, they couldn't create skeletons that looked realistic enough, so they used real human skeletons. Since then, they've removed all but one. Ducks sometimes become cannibals due to boredom, meaning they kill and eat each other. This behavior begins as early as four weeks old. Crocodiles are capable of galloping, similar to a horse. Luckily, alligators cannot. And while we're at it, tarantulas can swim. <laughs> it's extremely common after you die that there will be extreme gas buildup and you will burp after death. And sometimes dead bodies can even sit up on their own. Also, if a pregnant woman dies, the gas buildup in her body can actually forcefully push a baby out. In other words, a post-mortem baby bazooka. Hearing is the last bodily function to go after one dies, so it's very possible that the last thing you ever hear is the paramedic calling off your CPR.